The San Marino Grand Prix on the 1st of May 1994 was a black day in motor racing history. Well, Formula One had been 12 years without a fatality of any kind, and there had been no enormous name to die in Formula One for many years. There was an entire generation of Formula One drivers who had grown up and gone through the schooling formulas and into Formula One, not even considering death as a factor. The racing community almost believed that they'd managed to tame the effects of an impact, but they were wrong. This crash reminded them of the fatal nature of their business and took the life of Formula One's leading light. Ayrton Senna was one guy who could not die in a race car. He was just too good. He was the Mozart of Formula One drivers. He was meticulous. He was brilliant. Uh, he couldn't die. Senna had reached the point where he was unquestionably the man. He was the benchmark. He'd won the championship three times. At that time, Imola in northern Italy was one of the fastest tracks in Formula One, and thus one of the most exciting to race on. But that weekend started badly when Senna's fellow Brazilian Rubens Barrichello crashed during Friday's qualifying session. Senna was deeply upset by that accident, went to visit. Uh, Barry Keller was relieved he was OK. But there was, there's no question, that Friday evening, it, everybody had been given a little bit of a jolt here. Saturday, of course, we had um, the death of Roland Ratzenberger. The fact that Ratzenberger's crash was the result of a car failure was of little consequence. A visibly upset Senna even confessed to his girlfriend that he didn't want to race the next day. He died 24 hours later from a crash at Imola's notorious flat-out corner, Tamburello Bend. Tamburello was this sweeping left-hander, which was technically not a particularly difficult corner. But the problem was that it had this wall on the outside. But that's why it was so exciting. You had disaster right there. You literally were looking disaster in the face in that concrete wall. This is a reconstruction of the view from Senna's car as he approached Tamburello Bend at nearly 230 kilometres an hour. To understand why Senna may have crashed, you need to know a little about the science that keeps these cars on the road. The technology is such that cars have become quicker through corners. Straight line speed doesn't really mean an awful lot. You have a combination of tyre technology and car technology, and the two together have combined to make these phenomenal machines through corners. Formula One cars race at speeds of up to 330 kilometres an hour. The car's hold on the track is from a combination of mechanical grip generated by the suspension and aerodynamic grip from the wings. And all of that must go through the tyres. A racing tyre is fundamentally different to a road car tyre. The surface temperature of a racing tyre is, is around 150 to 200 degrees C, somewhere in that, in that window. If you were able to put your hand on the tyre and pull it away, uh, it would be coated in rubber. It's that sticky. It's, like, it's, all, it's, all, it's approaching chewing gum. But at speeds greater than the takeoff velocity of a jet aircraft, the cohesion created by the high tyre temperature is not enough to keep the car on the road. This is where downforce comes in. The aim of downforce is to increase the force pressing the car onto the circuit, onto the tarmac, uh, and that's to increase the friction between the, the tyre and the track. Designers had discovered that accelerating the airflow under the car creates a negative pressure which sucks it into the road. The closer you bring the car to the road, the greater the downward force. But it's a risky business, because if the car makes contact with the tarmac, all this downforce is suddenly lost. As Senna was about to negotiate the Tamburello Bend for the seventh time, sparks were seen coming from the rear of his car, a sure sign it was bottoming out. When the belly of the car hits, 
That means that the wheels are now sitting too high in relationship to the car to do you any good for, for maneuverability, for steering. In 1994, Formula One cars would often bottom out on straights with no consequence, but during cornering, it was a potentially hazardous situation. We've all had conkers on strings and swung them around our heads, and if you cut the string, the conker flies off. It's exactly the same with a racing car. If you lose adhesion or grip with the circuit, you fly off the circuit. Lap seven of the San Marino Grand Prix, Senna crashed at Tamburello Bend. One of the world's greatest racing drivers, Ayrton Senna, has died after a horrifying crash today at the San Marino Grand Prix in Italy. All of a sudden, the image of Formula One changed. It was back to a blood series worldwide. And Formula One had been like that in the 60s and early 70s, but now you were in the 1990s, an era where safety and good health and the denial of death by society as a whole. You know, we'd quit smoking, we'd gotten more fit, uh, we didn't want to have heart attacks anymore. Western society as a whole was denying death and Formula One was going along with it, that you prolonged life as long as you absolutely could. Now you have a guy in his prime, boom, gone. The shock of Senna's death was his enormous, and I went to his funeral, in fact, carried him to his last resting place. And when that accident happened, Brazil, Brazil came out in mourning. I mean, the, the roads were lined 10 deep for the, the funeral procession. The fact Ayrton Senna's death was witnessed live by millions sent shockwaves across the world. But inside the racing fraternity, people were still trying to understand how he'd been killed at all. That shouldn't have been a fatal accident because cars went off the circuit quite frequently and they're built so strongly even then that they should, it should have been able to withstand the impact and he would normally have been expected to walk away from that car. He was just unlucky because the impact was such the tire was thrown back, hit him on the head and killed him. Formula One quickly introduced drastic new safety measures. The car's sides were built up and wheel tethers were added to keep them from reaching the drivers. At the same time, circuits across the world were altered to slow them down, and Tamburello Bend would never be the same again. At every given point, no matter how safe we think we're making the sport, the danger is still there. But then that is the essential element of the sport. And people think motor racing is safe today. Well, it is, until the wrong accident occurs. There's something very gladiatorial about the sport. These guys put themselves on the line every time they get into that car. No matter what, there will always be crashes, but today's drivers face a different world to those who raced in the terrifying early years. Yeah.